was the killer for it. <laughs> so that was that's what I was literally was just about to say. The running gag between him and I was was we both wanted fifty three, and so I actually I was fifty three with the Foxes. Um, okay. Because I think technically I started playing for the team before he did. So I played I played games with, on the Foxes in in two thousand ten. Didn't play in 2011, but then played in 12 and 13. Okay. And so by being on the roster before him, um, I got I got 53. So I'm t- so on these jersey number stories, I, I mean, I think somewhere along here, I mentioned that I bought the 50 from John Gillette with the old bucks, the red and black bucks. Yeah. He was 50. He moved to 51. I mean, it was like 50 bucks or something. He knew it was important to me. Yeah. The best, the, the best and, and most sacrificial jersey thing i've ever seen this is a true story and it, it it's such a weird story because of everything else that's involved tiffany's cousin was having a a birthday party down in st louis and the next day was the start of a league when the midwest crush were going to field an 11-man team i remember that I had, I had signed papers stan and mick came to my house i signed them and then they the night before we're not having a team okay yeah. nope Dom's Shane, gone. Uh, he'll be back he'll be back yeah shane moore figured that out and knew I was in St. Louis and called me and said, Hey, we're playing at um, McClure South, which was Normandy. Right. So come down and play. We get down there and play. I don't have any, I had the black pants because that's what Crush were going to use. Shane gave me his 50 jersey. Really? That game. That game. And it, it was tight as hell. It fit. <laughs> but, I mean, and he'd been 50 for, you know, Shane had yeah. never not been 50 either. We always used to joke about it, but he gave me, I don't know what he wore. He gave me the jersey, the jersey off his back. I don't know that I'd have done that for anybody, but they right. really did. Need, they needed a lineman bad. bad well, and you bad. did you just play one year with? Because I, I mean, you played a handful of games. Was it was it just one the one season though? Because I remember that because I think you would reach out to me at one point and yeah, and I couldn't tell you what year it was, but I was I had no time, or maybe I was already playing with the Foxes or something, and and I just couldn't make it work. I want to say it was pieces of two seasons, but it could have been okay. one. I was pretty spotty in, in whether I could make it or not. Because you got Rob, Rob to play too, right? Got Rob to play. Yeah. And then the guys we knew that were playing, you know, Bates was playing. Um, uh, they had a quarterback that I can't remember his name. They had, you know, for Marcel Pfeiffer and some guys. Big Ant yeah. was playing. Yeah. Um, you know, so there were guys we knew. And, uh, you know, Kenny they Miles. Had, they had some good lot. longevity. They, they hung around for, I mean, there was a long time when they were playing 11 man and, Really, I mean, they didn't talk about it much up here, obviously, because it was, I think, far enough away and, and, and distanced enough. But, I mean, they went, they they were playing 11, they played 11 men a lot longer than the Outlaws did. Yeah, and the truth is, I think when there were times that we didn't, they, they got into like the Alliance League for a while and some other league, they still were playing 11 man. It was kind of a crazy league. Right. But they played 11 man some seasons that I didn't, wasn't even sure, didn't even know about. And, you know, yeah. playing for Kenny Miles was fun. Kenny did a lot to, you know, these guys who, came from the Springfield and went and did their own thing. Kenny was a yeah. great coach, man. Yeah. Uh, one time I didn't like one of his coaching decisions, man. And uh, it was late in the half and we, you know, instead of taking the knee, we went for something. I, th- I don't know if we picked six did or what happened, but I was pretty hot. And uh, I, I, somebody said something to me and then I said something and Kenny, Kenny Miles didn't even know me that well. And he goes, man, Brent, I love the passion, but it can't be like this every game. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, this is every game. You don't understand. And I was like, okay, yeah, I, maybe I finally had, had gotten old enough to not do that. But I, that, that was actually probably the most effective way anybody ever addressed me. <laughs> hey, sometimes calm and collected is all it takes. Yeah. I got I got a funny story. Once once Dom gets back on here, he'll, he'll, he'll probably remember. But, um, yeah, it, you know, you, had, you, you talk about Kenny Miles and, and kind of the – I don't want to say success because, you know, they, they, but the teams he had, and then, and then on the flip side, you had um, another individual in Springfield who probably started three to five different teams that never got off the ground. And so that's what, that's what the, the, the segue to the story I've got with Dom is about. But um, I mean, I, I remember you, when they, when the Cougars were good, I mean, there were a couple of years when they won the league yeah. and were, were legitimately very good. Um, they, they, it was kind of hot or cold, you know, I mean, I don't know if they were ever, ever bad, bad those years, honestly, after, um, the, the outlaws were done playing a lot, that, that one year that I played with them, they made some kind of a national playoff. I mean, they were going down to Memphis. It was a crazy, right. Um, that was, I remember and, that. Know, yeah. The there was some was teams that, there was a team that showed up in a bus decked out in the Navy and gold Notre Dame who thought they were going to dog walk us. You know, there's a couple of jerseys here, there, a couple of helmet decals. And and there were some we put it on them. I mean, there were some athletes there, and we put it on those boys. And uh, you know, they went home with a different attitude. 
I always, I always valued, or not value, but I always appreciated the the Cougars because um, they had a great website um, and they had up to date stats, which, as you know, I was, I'm OCD about. Um, so it was always fun it to be able to look kill- on there. <laughs> Semi pro stat you had to kill you, and it just had to. I mean, it did. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, I just remember the the first game. I remember the first time. Because the first couple of games, if you remember, when we were playing in Springfield, we had the, the, the Journal Register who came and did very accurate stats. Right. Well, I just remember going up to Peoria and playing the Mid-State Steel, and we, we beat them. Um, and that was the first game with Jake Duro. And I just remember getting on the bus and talking with Chris, and Chris was like, he was probably like, I don't know, 13 to 20 for 150 yards. And I knew in my mind, I was like, there's no way because I know Dan had six catches himself and Lorenzo Bruce had eight. Like yeah. there's no and there's no possible way he only completed 13 passes. And so then I was like, do you? I remember talking to Chris and not not angry right. or I was like, did you right. do you do you keep stats? He's like, no, I just kind of wing it. And I was like, ah, I'll well, do that, it from here. On that's out. probably true because that was the game right where we we were stopped. You know, inside their twenty. You know, a couple times I think it was maybe some officiating. A couple times it was some other stuff, but like. We, I think he'd work backwards from the score, right, and and then yeah. and then try to get the stats. But on that one, it, it, it shouldn't have been even that close, I don't think, because there were, you know, there were those. That was the game up in Peoria where uh, the touchdown didn't count, right, and and the other one where was that the one where Battle was across the the line? Yes. Right? So, so we did. We lost that game. You're right. So Battle was across the line, oh, I think and we then won it. I think did did we lose that? One? No, it was like it was like twenty one to. 14 so we we battle was across the line and then there was actually it's on it's on it's on ronnie foster's highlight reel he caught a he caught a touchdown pass essentially out of bounds on craig rolf and um didn't they get us out of bounds on one that we thought we, we got like, us on something somebody? i think yeah was they got us points, you know there yeah yes and 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 we and and we to our credit on offense we just munched them all like we were all over the field and they had i mean kenton Carr threw for probably 400 yards against us too so yeah. Um, yeah. That didn't help, but um, but yeah. So after that, that's when I kind of and, and I didn't really do much. I wish I'd gone. I wish I'd kept very accurate stats during that first eight man season. But it was we really didn't. That was before we had to film games. We didn't. You know that wasn't part of the bylaws or anything. Um, well, when we have Brian Davis on, you're going to love him because he kept stats during the game at full. I mean, he would <laughs> we would walk to the line and he would say, "Man, if we get this first down." That's 102 yards for Mark Harris. I mean, he that, that was through, yeah. he's like hey, Spencer's seven for 12 with two touchdowns and no picks. That that's all he did during the game. I mean, I had to concentrate on who the hell I was going to block yeah. because I it was already at a decided disadvantage. He could just go out there and crush people and think about stats. That's and that's and again, so Dom, we're just talking about talking about a little bit like statistics and things like that and just the the inaccuracies that went on. I mean, that was one of the things. I wish we'd I wish we'd been more sticklers on in, in the when the eight FL was kind of at its heyday was was having a good website with stats. I mean I because I did it just for honestly the only reason I started doing stats other than other than Chris was Dan, you know, trying to keep track of his touchdowns because I remember I remember driving down to Carbondale one year or driving back to Carbondale one year after uh playing a game and just in keeping my sanity, I was like adding things up and I was like, Oh Dan, do you know that you're only 10 touchdowns away from a hundred or whatever? And he was like, I didn't know that. And then, so that kind of got the ball rolling then more about keeping it. And, and then, and then again, it just, I, it, it was like a disease in my brain. I had to do it. Dom, you were never a crazy stat. I mean, here's what I, uh, Dom can address this, but here's what I remember about him. Like Don was not a crazy, he was not a crazy stat guy. And when a quarterback is, it, it kind of looks bad. Like, Tony, it's all, I think it's cool, and it says a lot about being a teammate that you were concerned about Dan's stats. If Dan was concerned about Dan's stats, it looks bad. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're saying, right. <laughs> you know, the only stat that matters is did I jump offside? Did I get beat? Uh, yeah, was it a bad right? snap? <laughs> but so Don would never. I don't think he ever kept stats until somebody would short him something. Like you know, somebody be like, man, you know, Don might have had two touchdowns. He'd be like, dude, I threw four, uh, and two more were dropped. All right, like he never get brought the stats out, but he he had a rebuttal when somebody shorted him. <laughs> I definitely knew. I definitely knew what they were. Uh, I was aware of them. Oh, your 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 mute your audio went out, Dom. Can't hear you. I think I lost your audio, buddy. Dom. <laughs> He's getting He's pissed. pissed. He's getting pissed. <laughs> Just, this is going to be a <laughs> offensive coordinator on the sidelines. I know. 
We had him for a second. I know. He was good. He sounded fine. There we go. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you, no. but, but you guys always put him – somebody somebody was doing him because I remember in the, you guys always had him in the newspaper. Yeah. And Pick pretty it. accurate. Pickett started doing them in 2006 with the Stallions, and he was very meticulous about them because yeah. you know, in the 06 season we had the games that were on TV, and then we had the games that we'd film ourselves, and he would break them down for two purposes, A, to get the stats, and then B, just for coaching purposes. Um, but starting in 06, he did it, and then he had all the film from the Seminoles years. Right. And he did it all the way through 2010, and then I think he kind of had enough and didn't want to do it anymore. But, yeah, right. they were – he was – uh you know, there would be times where I'd be like, let's leave some of those off. or, <laughs> uh, But he wouldn't well, do it. But, yeah, I mean, like to Brent's point, I, I tried to keep the receipts in the back of my head. But, I, you know, I, I wanted to win more than really anything. And and I I had some receivers that were more interested in their stats that, you know, I couldn't get myself involved in that. I just kind of took the back seat and let those guys drive. So It was right. a great day in the huddle when Dom did remind everybody there was only one ball. I mean, I was there for that, and it was great. And it's something he says all the time now. To say it in the game to the guys who are always open. He's like, he finally he broke down. He's like, there is one ball. There's one <laughs> ball, and there's three of you, man. I, like... well, then, yeah. To our to our guys' credits too. Like, I don't think we ever really dealt with that much. The only the only and we talked about it. We talked about it with Chris. The only the only time we ever had a like, give me the ball situation was Carlos, and that was in the that eight oh, eleven God. man original season. Um, but we know. I mean, Carlicker was never real bad about that. Kreitz was never going to open his mouth and say anything like that. Um, Nature I mean, itself wasn't like, going to be like, "Give me the ball" or anything like that. I'll say but. this too about Carlos. It was like the most. I mean, the, the speech should be. It was never. It was not at Chris. I mean, he, I mean, I remember no. he, he said, "Please go." I mean, and I, I did it sometimes. Like we we'd run a couple times and then we would throw three incompletions, and I wouldn't understand. Coach. God, please, you know, let, let's go. Let's run this ball. Let's let it, let's let the line get after him. Don't put us on our heels after we get you three first downs. Carlos says, Coach, I will bleed for you. I'll bleed for this team. Give me the ball, coach. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't ten, like ten, was, ten was straight. No, ten straight carries uh, coming off the field, dry heaving. His pants are on his ankles. They fell down. And we were at the one yard line, and Chris was like, Nah, baby, get back in there. You're getting this touchdown. <laughs> And that's threw him in that's there. How you stop that shit, right? That's how yeah. That's... But literally, literally, it was like it was ten. It, I want to say ten or eleven straight carries that he just said run. And it, I mean, he ran sixty yards on those ten carries. I mean, it wasn't like he was getting one yard a pop. He was running dudes over. But and he, so he Dom, was, he was the, he was the DT playing fullback. Too. I mean, yeah. You know, let's understand this wasn't a running back. He gave it to ten straight times. Who, no, who this man. Out? God love him. Battle. Battle. Sit up and Battle. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, God. Dom, we were talking. We were talking about. So we were talking about the uh, the McCoupin County Cougars or whoever they were, and then um, I kind of started talking about the the Springfield Tigers. Do you right. do you remember the game that you Dan and I refed with Buddy? Very vaguely. Yeah. Wasn't it? Was it a Rotary? It, no. It was. Uh, oh God, I couldn't even tell you the name of the park. Uh, so Brent, we show mm. up there. I know what you're talking about. It was yeah. Out. Yeah, it was. Yeah, God, what is we, the name of that park? I know exactly what you're talking about. We show up. It's it's right after we won the Dom. Dom was playing arena ball, or the season had just ended. We had just won the championship for against Macomb, and we show up just to kind of watch the Springfield Tigers play some team out of St. Louis. And Buddy's there, and Buddy's like, "I don't have a crew." And and Dom, Dan, and I looked at each other, and we're like, "We'll do it, man." Like we can't mess it up. Um, and so we refereed that game, and I and I think I – I couldn't tell you who won. Um, I know I threw a flag on a dude for hands – illegal hands to the face, and Buddy was like, don't throw that flag. <laughs> I was like, right, sorry. Where was Buddy? Where was Buddy, Dom? Where was <laughs> – Right, right. I know. Where was that? Uh, Buddy – but so I, I played I played a side judge. Uh, did you play a side judge, Dom, or did you play – I was a side judge. Yeah. Okay, so Dom and I were the side judges. Buddy was the, the head ref, so Buddy was behind the quarterback, and Dan was the, was the other one. Uh, the whatever field judge or whatever, and 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 we ref the we ref the game, and we didn't get any money, didn't get any, nothing out of it, but we got the hell out of there as soon as that thing was over, because that was ragtag. Oh yeah, give give me a general location where they. I got to know where they played. Um, I'm not sure if they ever played. It was on the outskirts of Springfield. I know that. I can't remember. Yeah, it's there's a, it's over by like it's on the north side. Um, like are, are you heading kinda, out to the airport? Like no, the, so the, so. So the where the new Darcy's Pint is, if yeah. you go, okay. if you keep going over the hill, over by like the uh, shit, I'm drawing a blank yeah, now. Yeah, it's, 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 
Southern View. So then you yes. go over the hill, yes. you take a hard right. Yes. All the, a Southern View, a Southern View Park. Yes, yes. Yes, it, yes, that it has was. to be. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So, we, yeah, yeah, that's that was the the, the infamous. And because, Dom, you and I were going to play for the Tigers at one point. Yeah. And all I remember was, was Dom was, Dom was like, begging me. He was like, if I'm playing quarterback, you have to play. And I was like, <laughs> I'll play, but you got to tell – I, you got to tell him I need a helmet. I'm not wearing my outlaws helmet or getting it repainted. And Dom was like, "I'll tell him. I'll tell him. I'll tell him." And and we never never played a, a down for that you team. Were, they, they were they were not going to buy you a helmet. I'm just going to tell you that. That's right. That was my that was my that was my that was my, uh, my point. I needed a helmet because I wasn't going to repaint mine. So it was that. What was that guy's name? His last name was Smith. That ran the team. Uh, Terry Terry Smith. Smith. Harris, man. Yes. Yeah, we were. I, 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 we were talking about him. He, he, he tried a couple different teams. I know he, Springfield Tigers tried to get off the ground. Um, at one point there was the Springfield Punishers. I think he might have been involved Wasn't with. Wasn't like the Gorillas, the the, the Headhunters, the Headhunters, head Springfield Headhunters. Yeah. So none of them. I mean, the Tigers, to their credit, they they played a game, but um, to to the absolute credit, then and again, I never played for them, and and I was, I you know, I was uh, very cautious. Credit the Foxes. And the Holland's Head kids and all that. Hey, they had nice uniforms. They yeah. got the good fields. Honestly, that that was a a, a worthwhile production. And I, I would have never thought it would happen. Jake, Jake did it. I will give a ton of credit to Jake. Um, he did it the right way. He he separated himself as the owner from football, where he wasn't gonna be a coach. Uh, he did play. I know he played his first year because they were short people. And he just went out and played late in the season. But he separated himself. He hired John Rowe. Uh, Rowe yeah. called the offense. Nick Kime called the defense, I think. Um, I know Mike Harris called the defense for a year or two. So he brought good coaches in. Um, and then it was – essentially it was an eight-man all-star team. I mean, like, the when, when they were really good – Yeah, those, really, that's it. The Steel grabbed the guys from up north. And, yeah. And, and the Foxes grabbed the guys from south. It was – I mean, it was. It was like Springfield south. It was the Foxes. And then up – Peoria north, it was – you know, Peoria area because obviously there are a ton of Chicago teams. But, um, yeah, because we – I mean, we went straight from eight-man right into the Foxes season a couple of times. And it was It was a blast. I was willing to bet a ton of money that would have went the way of of the Flying Tigers and the Headhunters and then the yeah. New Tigers and but hey I mean they Later. five five six seasons <laughs> right I mean, I mean I uh, 2010 11 12 13 14 15 yeah that's five yeah so yeah I mean and, when, and they were I mean, playing on, they were playing on SHG's field I mean they you know they they put together yeah. a, a good, good production when, I mean the the 2012 season. Um, went and played Racine for a national title um, or a, I don't know if technically a national title, but uh, you know, a, a, a title, a league title. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and, and again, even though I was on the steel in 05, there are probably 15 national no, I know, I know. Yeah. every year. Right now they had to beat the Kane County Cougars. So, uh, I, you know, I'll claim that forever, but you know, the Foxes do deserve, I mean, we'll talk about Springfield and semi-pro football. They probably deserve more than a footnote. A lot of those oh, definitely don't yeah. even deserve a footnote. They really did. You know, I, I don't know what caused it to finally not happen. You know, like I only know the story of the Bucks and the Outlaws because I was there yeah. and the press because I was there. But that's a good run. And it was called. I, honestly, if I'm a I don't know because I wasn't around for the end of it, but I, I probably just as any other team, you know, a lot of egos and a lot of cooks in the kitchen and um, probably other teams started to, to come about. Um, but it's unfortunate. I mean, because the. The Mid State Steel, do they, do they, when was the last time, game they played? When was the last time yeah. they played? I, maybe two years after that, I think. Right. I, I mean, so. that's probably about right. Yeah. Well, and you know, you got to wonder. I mean, honestly, you guys are what, six years younger than me. Where do the outlaws end up? Do the Seminoles even happen if younger guys don't say? I mean, those were quality games and there were younger guys, but they weren't dedicated. You know, they, they weren't, it wasn't, I don't know, they weren't about that life. It's just, you know, I mean, honestly. We, we, Tony, you, Dom, you guys showed up and like that was, that was part of who you were. It wasn't just fun on weekends, right? I mean, oh, that's, that's, that's how it was for me way back then. Back then, there weren't enough old guys when I was a young guy. There were a lot of young guys, but only some of us were, were really about it. Like, yeah. you know, and, and, and for you, you guys brought in a new group. If I was guessing on what happened to the Foxes, that's probably it. Yeah. yeah. The, the old guys who cared a lot cared, and the young guys just didn't care that much. 
I well, I mean, you got you got to remember though, for those couple of years that I played for the Foxes, I was one of the old guys. Right. I mean, I I I played. For, I mean, you know, Kevin Norris came over and played. Mike Tomlin played, but like, so I've been playing that, for though, a the, long the time. Young guys, the young guys, when you played, did you have confidence that they were they were really that they were really into? It? I guess that's yeah. like what I'd ask. Yeah, I mean, there were I mean, some there were some guys that they bought in pretty hard hardcore to that, and then you had Drew Drew playing quarterback who. Was you know they they follow Drew. I mean that was half the reason we won in in 2012. That, honestly, that was half the reason we won the the eight man league in in 2013 because Drew threw eight million yards to to Gary Miller and, and Marcel Pfeiffer, and then they came and played for that for the Outlaws that next spring. But of, of the dozen almost guys you 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 came in with and brought Tony, the only guys that that didn't stick around for a long time it was it was work. So like Kanan, that's work. Right, yeah. I get that. That's making a living. I understand. Dom, people came uh, at, at your age and younger and played because they wanted to play with you. You weren't even, you know, you were from here, but had been gone and came back. I mean, you know, that's the thing. I, I, I don't know. I, I think the young guys well, come and some of them buy in, but, but if a lot of them fall out, I mean, you guys had like an eighty percent close rate on getting people to play and play for a while. Well, Dom, you had guys. I mean, the year you played, oh, eight, uh, excuse me, the year you played indoor. Jamie Ford, it's not like Jamie Ford came and played for the Outlaws that year. He just didn't play football that year. Yeah. So, like, you had guys that kind of what, took a hiatus, a sabbatical, so to speak, to, yeah. to wait for you to come back and play. So, Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I think the thing, if I could put my finger on any of it, I think it's you look at the teams that had the most success, the franchises, let's call them. Um, they had a good core group of players. You know, you guys, you look at the Outlaws, the core group that you guys had. You two, you had, um, you know, Boost for a while, Cody, Dan. I mean, the list goes on, but that core group was around for a really long time, right? And uh, same thing with the Seminoles. We had our core group, some of the Peoria teams do. And once the core starts to kind of, you know, stop playing or split up a little bit, you got to mm-hmm. have the next wave of players to, to kind of take over and pass it on. And I just I think that's definitely what's happened to Springfield. It sounds like um, that next no wave way. just never came. Yeah. Well, I don't think I don't honestly I don't think anyone wanted to step up from the other side of things from the coach. You know, oh, you, look at, you look at Nick, Nick, Nick was like, I got to get out of Springfield and he's coaching the team in Peoria. So I, I don't think there was any of those. You know, there was no Nick Pickett, Tommy Akers, somebody yeah. like that to kind of come step up and, and do it. And and to their credit, they did a lot of stuff that we never really realized yeah. <laughs> behind the scenes in regards to, uh, you know, paying refs and setting up the field and, and, and setting up the, all of that stuff. So it, it was, it's a, there lot, was a lot of also, time. They, yeah. they also in some circles were willing to take a lot of hits for being a part of that. I mean, right. in all honesty, right. I mean, we did a little bit too, you know, listen, we all know how people feel about semi-pro football. I will go on the record now and say what we did on the football field was every bit as good as what that baseball team was doing at Lanfear Park every night. Mm-hmm. It's every it's older guys, but it's damn near as good as what the junior blues did in their best years. But football is just different. You, you know, it's a different element. It's way more passionate. Hey, the NFL has those parabolic microphones for a reason. You know, <laughs> parents bring their kids to a semi-pro game and we don't have those and they hear it all. If you've ever sat close enough to an NFL game, you know, you know that they're not that family friendly either. Right. But those guys did. I mean, in their personal lives, Chris was talking about it. You know, the gen- general calls him in and says, is it really worth it? No, I don't know. I don't think so, sir. You know, that that's it. Right. I mean, they took to be a coach and be um, considered to be in charge of that. Somebody that you have no control over 50 guys you have no control over. Yeah. Be, be in charge right. of 20 me's. Come on. I mean, how, how is that going to turn out? Well, and you don't, And you don't. It's not like we have. It's not like there's like a salary or, a, you know, and you, you know, if if if. If Bob Jones runs his mouth and you say you're not playing this week, he's just going to say peace and take you know and take a walk. There's no control. You got you don't have you know you don't have a bargaining chip. Right. You got fifty. You got fifty death row inmates who got nothing to lose <laughs> every day, man. That's, yeah. You know that's the truth. <laughs> a little too close. Oh, yeah. Yes. Is there uh? Is there any is there any semi pro around you now, Dom, in Texas? You know, I've never really paid attention to it. I'm sure there's got to be. Um, there's a couple of arena teams. I know Frisco has a team like the Rough Riders or something. Yeah. Um, 
but I, there I would think there has to be. I mean, football is just so big down here. I mean, the yeah. high school stadiums are. I mean, I know you've seen them, but I'm yeah, right. I mean, it's well, those high school kids all have to do something. I mean, you know, the, the high when high they're school done, football right. down there is bigger than 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 the college ball the Mac schools play. So. Yeah, like right. Allen Allen High School was. I mean, it's like forty minutes from me, and they are usually top five in the country every year. But it's a completely unfair advantage. You'll appreciate this, Tony. So, like, I think the city of Allen's probably one hundred forty thousand people now, so bigger than Springfield. Yeah, they have one high school. Yeah. They get twelve hundred kids a year for freshman football. Right, right. No, I know, and 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 they and they right, and they get to it's like it's like they, Lombard North and those schools up in and Chicago, they have like right? a hundred and fifty million dollar stadium they play in that literally looks like a college stadium. Right. It's no, got, they yeah, but 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 on the flip side of that, the amount of we're talking about semi pro coaches, the amount of pressure that those oh. Texas high school coaches have, like yeah. you don't win, you're. You're gone. Done. Like you're yeah. gone. You're fired. Like it's and and because they don't teach. Yeah. I mean that's that's what I, that's what I, you know. I know I've got quite a few friends and and you know there's a few that they've got. Oh, I have two weight training classes or whatever. No, they're the facilities coordinator and they're making one hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year to coach high school football. And they probably they probably get a car. They're probably getting money under the table, especially if they're winning and successful. So it's like, but you gotta win. Then they should, you know, I mean, hey, that's a pretty, you know, it's probably one of those situations that the movies don't get totally wrong, right? Like the whole, you, you lose on Friday night, you can't talk to anybody for three right. days, right? But I mean, Real hey, at, at 160 yeah. grand a year, yeah, hey, you know, I, I think you probably ought to win too. Got to win. You got to win. I mean, I was just looking at something today or, or yesterday about some school, Pleasant Grove High School in Texas. They just built a $7 million football only field house so like oh, not a field I that uh, yeah. yeah not a field not a not a but like offices classrooms a training room a weight room seven million dollars just for football crazy but money freaking talks man and wins you know, talk a lot more than money yeah. hey college is basically pro so you know there, there's the yeah, last is now student, those, those are the last student athletes you know and yeah. really the emphasis is still on athlete right i bet i bet the best football players never have to leave that building to graduate their high school classes you know i mean well especially especially now with with they got long duck dong taking their class yeah <laughs> well no they do uh, now they do because i remember this happened with manzel but like and especially now with covid they probably just do all their stuff online yeah like their classes are, are, are more i mean now you get some that obviously are there to be student athletes but the ones that are know they're going to professional football they're taking online courses more than likely they're not doing Independent studies. Yeah, right. Exactly. General education. That like that's what they're taking. They're not taking well, well, physics. You know, things haven't changed. You know, Darnell Jefferson gets Halle Berry as a tutor. I mean, things haven't changed that much. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you know Brett? This is you know, like this on on Twitter. One of my one of the guys I that I follow and talk to played center in the program. In the oh, movie. nice. Oh, in the movie. Yeah. So so uh, Donnie Thompson. He uh, uh, Thompson or Thomas? If I got it wrong, Donnie, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so he's every now and again, if there's a, someone talking about the program, he'll chime in and be like, I played center in that movie. And it's I like, that's the dude. coolest thing ever. And that was kind of like before. I mean, that was the one, you know, that that came out and, uh, you know, it was somewhat panned. But if you played football, you love that movie. I saw it on opening weekend when they were still laying down on the highway reading that magazine before they cut that scene. Oh, yeah. I saw it that weekend, man. And the only reason I know about that scene is because of you. I started growing my hair out long because Latimer's hair was long, man. I'm not even kidding. That's a true story, dude. I mean, it that was it was you know if you played football and loved football, that's a good movie. I mean, it holds it, up. I mean, it it it, it, it holds up well. I mean, there's there's now the only the only question because we were talking about I was talking about this on Twitter, um, is they were in the weirdest conference ever because they played Mississippi State, Michigan, right. Iowa, Texas, or. Uh, North Carolina, uh, Boston College, Georgia Tech, like they played the weirdest yeah. schedule. It was, like, it was, hey, they never beat a Big Ten team in that movie. That's, <laughs> that's what I remember. Latterer off Royds, loses at the, at the one. You know, to the and, dial. And then all, he could go all the way and takes it Tim, to him. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Wayman. Yeah. Tim yeah. Wayman. That's that's I think that's gotta be that's gonna be my my first team on on team builder. I gotta I gotta go with the e ESU. The East the e e C E S U E S U Wolves. It was the Wolves. Eastern East State University, the, the Wolf Pack, the Timberwolves, they, the Timberwolves. Yeah, they played it, they played at North Carolina State Stadium. Am I right on that? There was uh, uh, no South Carolina. South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina, yeah. 
So yeah, yeah. Dom and I know this stuff. We we've seen it way too many times. I, pretty good, pretty tight. And well, you know, one of the guys that was in it. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's my like dream part right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when they did the Leatherheads one, a couple of the uh, Illinois players caught on in that one. I remember them. Really? About it. Yeah. Uh, I think Butcher threw some throws for somebody, and, and the, the guy that was the long snapper that ended up doing the commentary for a while, I think, caught him with that, or it might have been the long snapper before him. Yeah. I mean, there's work in that. If we just lived in California, guys, <laughs> I'm telling you, there is good work in that. The guy from uh, Alvin Mack went to Mizzou. <laughs> no kidding? Yeah, he played football for a year at Mizzou, and then he was in a couple different Sports. Yeah. yeah, he was uh he was because he was a necessary roughness too. He was yes, yeah, uh, I did not see that in the theaters. You guys aren't old enough. Okay, no. I'm telling you, I knew Other him from that. And uh, from the Mark that's Harmon, one of my that's one of my favorites, though, Brent. Love yeah, it too. Oh, necessary yeah. roughness is great. It's a great it's play. Great. Yeah, it's a great. That play. might be that Brent, might be Brent the other team. I might have to, I might have to start Texas Texas State Armadillos. That might be team number two. That's that's another classic. It's straight arrow, Janeiro. <laughs> yeah, I drive by that stadium every now and then, and it's. I want to see your. I want to yeah. see your. Oh, is that North? Is that North Texas? That's North mm-hmm. Texas, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the old stadium still there. I'm, I'm ready to see for I'm Kathy see Island. You, yeah, and mod out Kathy Island with that stuff. Yeah. Shower scene. Send it to me. <laughs> yeah. I think I I think I drove by that once, Dom. Because it kind of it's is that the one that's right off the interstate? Right off of it, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. it like comes out of nowhere, and you're like, oh crap! Like, well, now they built another one, and it's literally right across the other side of the interstate. Like, you could throw really? it back and forth, yeah. So, it's wild. Um, but yeah, it's still there, the old stadium. So it's about. I, I'd usually see it when I drive home, when I go up to KC or come to Illinois. I, I drive yeah. By. Interesting. Yeah. Great movie. Forgot Jason Bateman was in it till I watched it again. And, you know, yeah. it was yeah. like I mean. Literally was an episode of Quantum Leap where Scott Bakula became a high school <laughs> or a college quarterback. College quarterback, yeah. <laughs> it was a that's a good one. There's some there's some good ones out there, man. I, I mean, we're we're getting off on tangent now, but uh, there's some terrible ones too. I, I can't remember. I was there. There's been a few, like I get I get shit on because I I'm gonna get shit on now. I can't stand remember the Titans. Ooh. I am. I, we watched that movie when I was in college for two years. Like my my junior and senior year, we watched that movie to every away game and home from every away game. Like that was the only movie we could watch. So it is like I cannot stand that movie. That makes sense. And it's not a bad movie. Brent, what was that trash movie you used to like with uh, Anthony Michael Hall in it? Who, what, which one? The one with Anthony Michael Hall that you used to like, the football movie. I didn't didn't like it. It just came out. I was just saying. Johnny Be Good. I understand now was Johnny Be Good. There There was once a movie where. All right, hang with me here. Robert Downey Jr. was the dorky kid. Yeah. And Anthony Michael Hall was the stud quarterback he the, wanted to be. The that stud was quarterback. Thing. That happened. The, yeah. You know, Iron Man. Yeah. Iron Man was the dork. He was and brokering Anthony his Michael NIL Hall, deals. Who, played, who, who yeah. played the kid in uh, uh, Breakfast Club was the stud. Let's just leave it at that. All right. That's it. I, I, I remember watching that one. one. Uma Thurman was the, the love interest. Yeah. Angel Hernandez. He, he cast that one. It was terrible. It was terrible. Angel, oh God! We get we got Angel Hernandez calls now. He did you, did, was, was I talking to you, Brent? Did I post it on your your page? How he 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 umped ten games last year and had one hundred and sixty one bad calls. That's that's it's insane. It's it's like he uh, worked in Peoria for the Steel. I mean, it's that it's like he's, like, he's an eight man referee. I would say Quincy is what I said, but yeah, Quincy. Terrible. Yeah, that's fair. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, it's it's apropos. You guys brought up uh, um, Buddy Dixon earlier, though. Um, he is he is the first person from the Springfield area to ever be in the Semi Pro Hall of Fame. He is, is he really. He is a member of the Semi Pro. I don't know how many years back it was, but he is. Who did he play for? I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> I, I found it out after I played. Um, I wish I would have known when I played. Yeah, um, I liked Buddy when he was. Really Buddy was great. I, I, was one, one of the few people who talked to me without. Um, already having a preconceived notion of everything I'd said to him in the past. <laughs> yeah, we we had, I mean, Cruz be like we. I think we've talked about this a bit. <laughs> Buddy, Limey, Bob. Um, there's a couple other guys I can't remember the names. I apologize, but like we had good. They were good guys. Like they they were going to call it fair. I mean, they weren't going to. They like, weren't. Yeah, they I weren't going like to screw Cruz anybody. Field call, they called it. Yes. I really did feel like they tried to call it fair, and we did. We talked about this before. Ask a lot of. 
asked a lot of them on the road. Oh, gosh. I mean, because especially listening to, to our sideline plus the Seminole sideline, I mean, plus, you know, what if they're the other team, whoever came to town, whoever it's game they're refing, but um, they were always good too. Like, honestly, I can remember, I can remember a couple games, a call not going our way, and hey, come on, Bob, or come on, Limey, and, you know, two or three plays later, we'd, we'd get a, a makeup call. So, um, and I used, to, I used to see them all the time because they did uh, Springfield High games. Yeah. So they would do like JV games and then they would do varsity games on Friday. So it was great to see those guys and kind of have a, have a relationship with them away from eight man too. So. And they were guys who would talk to you. You know, it wasn't that, it wasn't that, you know, even, you know, as a captain or whatever, they, they'd at least talk with you. Like, you know, and I remember, I think Limey one time he said, yeah, he goes, you're probably right. He said, we don't get them all. I mean, you know, you know, you know, he says, you didn't see nothing. I didn't see but I can't, I can't get the flag out every play. No, I mean, right. stuff like that, you know, as long as you were, you know, abrasive to them, they were pretty good. You know? No, and, they, so and the younger guys though, you know. Yes, like, they would get, they would get butt hurt. But that's honestly, that's probably now that I think about it, that's probably why I kind of, because I've got a, I talk to the refs still. I, I have to kind of build, try to build a relationship and it's not butt kissing or brown nosing, but it's just, I want them. I want to know that, like, I might get heated, I might get hot, but it, it doesn't mean anything. And so that's probably where it came from, honestly. Now that I think about it, is is talking to those guys and and eight man. Yeah, I, I feel like one rep. I, I I can't remember. I, don't, I won't be able to remember his name, but I hated that son of a bitch. <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about, but I, I can't remember. Glad his name you either. don't remember his first name. Older <laughs> guy. Yeah. I can't. I I think I know who you're talking about. There was there was a couple, and he would he would tell you. He would be real with you, yeah. I do remember Dan. Dan would know who it was right off the top of his head, but I can't remember. Never um, would call. He would never flag up in the passer, and it pissed me off so much. I would get <laughs> ear hold. You I guys, did. you guys get the interviews in the big box, man. All right, the guy who just hit you never gets talked to by the paper. Hey, look, yeah. I, I wish I played today versus when we played, even because at least they call rough in the pass. You can't even touch a quarterback yeah. now, man. Back then, especially at this level, and as much as I talked. I mean, guys were wanting three, four step, boom, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so, there was no letting up, dude. There, yeah, yeah. there was. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was like the um, the traveling in basketball in high school. You get that one and a half, and in the NBA you get three and a half. Yeah. They were giving everybody <laughs> three and a half to hit Dom. You know, to hit Dom. You know, yeah. No, I'm Buddy and Limey. I, I I got on their good graces. Uh, you know, in the I think 06 season, and they started to protect me a little bit. So that was now. Nice. Did they? Did they do? When you guys were playing in the professional league, did they do that too, or did I you guys? Think so no, we had. Um, I can't remember who did those. Well, I mean, I, can't I know remember. that was that was twenty years ago. But I know the I know at the start of the season there was league referees, right? Uh, that they would send to games, but I don't know. I mean, fuck, who knows by the end of the season, right? Like, been Christian Fullerton repping games by the end. Of Could have been. <laughs> have, have, but, side sidebar question to that, or, or part two to that. Are any are any of those teams still playing that you know yeah. of? Yeah. Um, I was looking at. I can't remember. I think Miami Valley still around. Um, okay. There's like two or three in Michigan. Um, and the only reason I know that is because a couple weeks ago I was looking on. I was trying to find the old Continental Indoor Football League website because at one point in time that game Elote and I had a monster game. I had the league record for completions in a game. Yeah. And then it, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it was evaporated by then, but I was trying to see if it was so, <laughs> it was so good. Uh, but it, I think uh, Kalamazoo still has a team. I think Miami Valley has a team. Okay. Um, a lot of them, I think they're in like the IFL again. I think that came back. Well, yeah, they're the, cause the AFL was obviously trying to come back and they folded quick and, but, but like the, Cedar Rapids and um, I think Green Bay Blizzard, like they still all play in. I think it's the IFL. Yeah. I think they all still play in that league, and they're, they're actually at, having some moderate success. I I couldn't tell you what their attendance is, but they're they're playing games. Yeah, that was uh, the Stallions turf was you know in 06. It said IFL across the middle of it, so that's always funny to me. I, yeah, Tony, I got it. You asked Dom <clears throat> that question in that league, but you know I'm surprised you. This is kind of funny, but on the roughing. Do you remember when we went up to play the slaughter? How many roughings did we hit for Dan? Just because he was short. We I mean, finally, I mean, you, we we finally got one called in the fourth quarter. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, but I mean, it was it, well. I remember at that point though. Though I think we got two, and then maybe got, it, it wasn't the, too the late. Though threw their hands up in the air and said, "Yeah, 
we've never dealt with a five, six quarterback. What do right. you want us to do? We can't right. tackle him. We can't tackle him low. Can't tackle him high. You know, but I do remember that, you know, they, they protected him and, I thought the guys were actually trying to get low, but it is what it is. Right? Yeah, they, I, yeah. I, don't, I mean, there was there there was no nobody in that game was intentionally trying to to injure no. anybody else. They were just. No. I mean, we weren't we weren't ready for that. We got murdered. I think yeah. I sent you that. I think I put that clip in the in the group chat because there's a he throws a pick. Yeah, and like it's just terrible. Like he has like literally less than a second of time before the ball before the defense is just murdering him and. Yeah, that was. I just. I mean, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, though. That was such a fun time, and we got pizza on the way home. So that's all I cared about. <laughs> yeah, we had pizza nice and beer on the way home. It was nice of Mongo to come in, and honestly, this is nothing against you, you know, Dom. You know, with the Stallions and, and what happened there, and then stepping on that game, and we were not ready. Uh, you know, we didn't know one coach was on the opposite sideline. We had no radios. You know, yeah. And, so the second half, they said, "Oh yeah, okay, you can stand on this sideline with our coach, so you can at least yell the plays out." Um, and. I will say that he was gracious enough to say, "Hey, we didn't eat the tickets, right? We did not eat those tickets." And uh, yeah, there was a good turnout for that game too. It was a good turn. It was like their la- their home finale. Yeah, uh, they were. You know, that was probably about a thirty thousand dollar deal to them, and that's why I think he was so gracious about it. But we, I, were, I play. I had to play defense that game and still shared the helmet with Pat Schweska because yeah, because I was the. <laughs> yeah. I I just remember we. I think that I think your guys' game got canceled like a Saturday. They called Chris, and I think it was because there was the Lincoln Way Patriots. That woman called Chris uh, Sherry Cardis, yeah. on a Sunday. Monday, he got us all together and we're like, we're going to do this. We practiced Wednesday and then drove up there Saturday and, and just were like swimming. Like we had no, we had no right being on that field. Um, yeah. And I told you, Brent, you almost you almost played that game because I was real close to throwing up before that game. I was I nervous. Play, yeah, I, I, hey, I played defense. You played defense. Up, I swear to God, the, the 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 right tackle from West Virginia could put me wherever he wanted me. But one time, I did read a little bit of a screen, and I got both hands on that thing, and not the fullback, but the running back caught it off off of the uh, <laughs> deflection, went forty yards. I mean, like, it's like, good, like yeah. it was like from first and goal on their five, and I'm like, yeah, we made a play. Maybe we can. Nope. He's gone <laughs> to first and goal on their five. You know, yeah, well, first and ten to first and goal. But, and we yeah. played – I mean, I don't know, if Dom, if you even knew this. We played, like, their their B team. Like, it was it was their practice squad guys. I mean, it was their backups. Like, nobody of value played that game. It was all, And it was a lot of guys that, Brent, correct me if I'm wrong, turned, you know, as soon as that season was over, went and played for the Kane County Eagles still. Right. Um, Ty Myers, the, the, uh, Ty yeah. Myers was in the hallway and, the, and their safety who – played at the Big Ten school. I, I talked to them on the way in, I, and Ty Myers always be a hero to me. He caught the pick to seal Illinois' Big Ten championship in 01 at, at Ohio State, you know, and, and that was the pre-juice win at Ohio State, and I was there. For yeah. And, uh, and you know, he, by the way, just funny about Ty, he was a kid from Springfield, Ohio, who Ohio State did not offer, went to Illinois and intercepted a ball. Pick, I think he picked six and ran it past or half, half field and uh, cinched a Big Ten championship for Illinois in the shoe. So I mean, that's a cool story. I, I, I talked about that, and you know, he's he lit up a little bit because that was a pretty cool. But yeah, he was in street clothes. He wouldn't play yeah. linebacker no. that game. <laughs> no. Well, that team was really good. I mean, yes, they they had. I mean, that franchise was really good. I think that was their first year too, the same year as us, and they were like ten and four. And I mean, they beat the hell out of people. And well, they they had a bunch they, of old rush players. And well, yeah, the the year after. Either the year after or the the next year when the AFL folded, all of those Chicago Rush players went and played for the slaughter, and they they murdered everybody. Like they went sixteen and zero yeah. and murdered everybody because um, it was it was a uh, uh, Bobby Scipio came Bobby out Scipio. came and played, yeah, yeah. Played and for a little bit, and they just murdered everybody, um, rightfully so because they had literal professional guys who played yeah. in the NFL. I think Scipio was like the best player in the arena league uh, at one point in time. So yeah. I, I yeah. Know how, had, much, um, how much time was on the clock when, when that prayer to Carlicker went in for a touchdown? Uh, no, it was, I don't remember. it was Q. It was Q. That's right. Yeah, it was Q. Uh, like 10 seconds. I, yeah, mean, I mean, it was under a minute. It was 63 nothing. Q celebrated like it was the Super Bowl, and those guys were just was, like, "You shut up!" They were like, "Get, I, I, get dude, out of I here!" Celebrated more than that. I would have been in the stands, bro. I know. <laughs> they did have some good. They had some good cheerleaders too. Don't don't tell my wife I said yeah, that. They, they had, had some a good great cheerleaders. program. It was yeah. Um, yeah. Juice Williams was quarterback there for, at one point, I think. Was he really? Yeah, yeah. I think he I didn't know that. 
uh, Juice and I think even Walter Payton's son. It's yeah, Jared Payton played. I think Jared Payton was that the year we played, uh, Dom, but he didn't play that. He didn't play against us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was probably just yeah. talking to Ty in the hallway, man. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> they were, they were, you know, there were plenty of guys in street clothes who looked like they played a little football that day. Yeah. And then there was us, and then there was the, the five six quarterback taking snaps from the hundred and eighty pound center. Yeah, when that we was played fun. the first time that season. I never played, right? I wasn't, I hadn't played yet, Kevin Gade, right? Uh, but I convinced them to let me hold kids <laughs> by like week four because I was like, "This is ridiculous." At least let me hold PATs. Let me and, do something. Yeah, and I remember in that game, we there was a one hop on the snap. And I picked, you know, I started to roll right and I was yelling fire, fire, fire. And everybody's looking back at me. I'm like, son of, you know, what am I? Gonna do <laughs> and the guy for the slaughter, I threw it and he grabbed me by my pads. I'll never forget this. And he had me up and was ready to put me over the wall. And he just held me there. He's like, I got you, baby. Don't worry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Like, like, oh, you, that's sir. worse than taking the lick, man. You know, I and mean, he, he, after the game, he was talking. He's like, the only reason I didn't put you over the wall is because you had those slick Jordans on, man. And you were wearing <laughs> Jordans, so I couldn't throw you over. I was like, all right, appreciate you. Yeah, right. thanks. Thank you. That's funny. Great to go on the injured reserve uh, for, you know, only holding kicks. And for holding kicks, out. yeah. Man. Good time. Well, what else? What else, boys? We got, we, we kind of had a, we had to pull up. Pull an audible, audible tonight, today. so we yeah. Audible. So uh, hopefully, hopefully we get our guest on. We we had a guest sort of planned. Uh, we'll do a little bit better job of making sure he's ready next week. So, um, yeah. but yeah, uh, anything else? I mean, I'm kind of curious on just uh, you know. I think Brent, you probably have a little more knowledge than any of us, but just from the region, from you know our era, who's made it to? The oh, we're we were talking about that before yeah. okay. before we started recording. Yeah. Okay. So when we we may at some point be able to get um, you know the the head and the president of the American Football Association on uh, uh, Dave Birch and he he's a, he is a, a fantastic guy who's run it for a long time and has given a lot of semi pro players recognition. So um, most of what we see because I mean really yeah, eight man has not been really recognized until recently. Most mm -hmm. the guys in there. Are, are old guys from the old 11 band teams. Um, sure. But, you know, Chris Lawson went in, I believe it was maybe 06, 07. Um, uh, Chris was able to induct me in 2010. Um, Alex Lawson as a GM went in in 2014. Um, Brian Davis went in the year before COVID, so I guess it was 19. Uh, and then Dan Eck in 22 and Tommy Akers in 23. Kind of outside of that window, um, Tommy Robinson from the Falcons is in, uh, Stan, Stan Johnson, uh, is in, um, Fred Robinson from down to St. Louis is in, uh, uh, Sherry Craig, Cubs. Craig, uh, yeah, Craig Witz, Craig Witz, who played with the Bucks and started the Decatur bears. Um, Sherry Cardis, who's a great friend from the casino bowl and ran the Lincoln way Patriots for years. Uh, Jim Nugent, um, uh, Greg Skoronsky, uh, who ran a couple teams up North, um, God, I know I'm, I'm missing a couple, uh, but the, those are those are the people that 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 I remember. Oh, of course, uh, Chief. Chief. I was going to uh, say Chief's in. Uh, Chief went in a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. So Chief um, was the Greg. Greg Moore was he was the head coach for the St. Louis Bulldogs, Tom. Okay. Um, and yeah. so he came up. We had we had like Dion and and those guys. Uh, he he played for the Bulldogs. Um, and so Chris and Chief had a good relationship, and so those guys came up and played a few games. Oh, I um, they, yeah. Yeah. And you know they're really, and it was it was really due to kind of because of Chris uh, from from knowing Sherry, knowing Jim Nugent, uh, knowing Dave Birch and Chief, and, and all those people, um, and Tommy uh, Robinson and all that. You know that was the first guy from from Central Illinois. You know, and well, they're beginning to be able to open their eyes up to how many how many. T I mean, you know, there's always a breadbasket of teams. The East Coast full of teams. You know, but yeah. There was really good football being played here. You look at teams like the Central Illinois Cougars who went to the national playoffs, Mid State Steel who won a national championship, Decatur Bears who went to the national playoffs. You know, I mean, you you know, even a step down from that, teams like Lafayette, Capital City Outlaws. You know, and and now they're starting to recognize the eight man leagues, which I think that's going to be great too because those guys like Dion. Are you kidding me? I mean, what an amazing player. You know, I mean, um, there, there's just. Uh, um, there are guys out there, and and that's what's out there now. Yeah, fields are, fields are easier to get. 
um, you know, no chain crew, you know, uh, no, um, uh, not nearly uh, as much, uh, you, you shorter referee, get the rosters a little bit shorter. It's hard to fund those teams, man. You know, I, I it, it really is. So that's what, that's, what's been really nice. You know, I mean, it really is. There's guys who continue to get recognition through that. Um, when I got in 2010, they weren't really interested in anything but the 11 man style. Yeah. yeah. yeah I can't believe there's a lot of deserving yeah. guys from this area. Um, and the thing is, you know, hey, you need to be a member. If you played semi-pro football, become a member of this. I mean, it, 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 it's bucks. the one thing that preserves that, you know, get our inductions at, at Canton. Dave Birch did this, you know. When I was inducted, it was in Chicago. When Chris, it was in Florida. Um, they do that every year now in Canton, Ohio. It's yeah. the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's yeah. Cool. It, it's a neat so, thing. So, Brent, um, I'm doing a little bit of research while you were talking. I, I don't mean to be a dick. Um yeah. Looks like Buddy Dixon played for the Chicago Heights Broncos um, and went in in 1997. But it's got to be him because I'm reading I'm reading an article That's from 1980, the Chicago Tribune, and, and it says Buddy Dixon, an Illinois State Highway Patrolman. Yep. Oh, listen, so, I, he, he had the ring on once, and I and did I, it really. So, yeah, I and I mean, you know, Buddy never told anybody. Never, no, I don't know gosh, why, no. But I did know that, um, and I noticed that it was the ring Chris had. You know, and um, you know, uh, cool. so the, you know that's pretty. Sp- I mean, I, we were around a semi-pro Hall of Famer before any of us ever knew yeah. Yeah. what it was. And I, I mean, I, I have to imagine he was a stud to get in. Oh yeah, he played. If, if the article made it sound like he played defense, he was. He was. Uh, so I would going to guess defensive line, honestly. Yeah, yeah probably. Um, I mean, it, it, the other thing about it is, honestly, when you think about the guys <clears> in the NFL, I, the one year I was up there, and I, I know Dan's so mad he didn't get in that year, but uh, Tommy Zabikowski's dad went in as a coach. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eric Swan is in. You know the, the tackle for the Cardinals. Who well, and some, and, you know. and that's what that's the thing. Like back in the back in the early '80s, yes. I mean, semi-pro football was legitimately semi-pro. It was guys who probably were, hey, the, you know, oh, the strike, the, the right? Bears, the strike the Bears are, too. Right, the Bears are going to sign you in in three weeks. I need you to get in shape. Go play semi-pro for a couple you weeks. Play with guys like that. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. There were a few. I mean, there really were a few. I mean, if you think about it. You know, we we had to figure out how to defend Carl Burgler. Tony, you and I had to block Gucci. I mean, he. You know, that's a Rose Bowl guy. We did. I mean, we did play the the guy from Bushnell, Dom. I I think you played against him. I can't remember his name, but he he was a legitimate two or three year starter at Iowa. Yeah. Um, and he came out. Oh, and that played. was uh, Gableman. Gableman, right? Uh, yeah. Was it? Was it Gableman? Something like that. And is Paul Stefik is mentioned in the, yeah, in, the Step- in the book. The coach is at uh, what St. John Gagliardi. The sweet season. I talk about Stefik, the All American lineman. Yeah, Stefik is in there. You know, I mean, there's there were guys. There, there Stefik, really, Stefik. I, I always remember Stefik talking about he had a cup of coffee with the the Packers. Yeah, I remember. So I mean, it's. There were guys. I mean, you know, there. Oh yeah. No, there were. No, I'm not. And I, 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 Dom was being a little tongue in cheekish, but most of the Specific guys. The, guy. Yeah. Guy, yeah. Most of the guys. Yeah. Most of the guys. Their stories were, uh, you know, two way players for the Chicago Bears. That's two way contract. Guy. So. Yeah. We well, when, we, when I went out to the one in in, uh, in California, there was a guy who did a radio interview me with me. You, that's what you talked about. It's so, it was so much fun. It was a little bit like this in the first years of the NFL, but in in the eleven man. Literally, when we were when I was playing for the the Bucks and the uh, Express, we would drive to Kokomo, Indiana, and Kalamazoo, Michigan, and Racine. Mm-hmm. And you know, you 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 spent two quarters figuring out: did this guy just come from high school football and show up here to play, or did this guy, you know, get a seventeen on his or seven on his ACT and not play college? You know, you, you right. had a quarter to figure out what kind of day you were going to have, and and. That really set the tone. I mean, there were days we went out there and just had a, uh, you know, you felt like you could dominate a guy. And there were days you went out there and you just worked your ass off to even stay alive. And right. it was kind of fun. Like like I said, we didn't even know what their helmet logo was or what color jersey they were going to wear. Show up and play. Let's see how it goes. You know, it's, it's crazy. I, I, there's something to be said for that. You know, I mean, if you're ready for everything, anything, that's that's kind of fun. You know? No doubt. No Got doubt. It. Uh, yeah, also, Bill really Walsh. Cool Bill didn't. Walsh is in that yeah. semi-pro Hall of Fame because he did coach a little bit of semi-pro football at some point. Is he really? Yeah, that's really that's cool. That's a pretty cool thing. So, anyway, uh, we we you know, someone has to. I'm gonna Brent. You might have to do a little research. I'll see what my dad can do. Yeah, we gotta see if we can maybe. I, I don't know if Buddy is with us still. Yeah. Um, but if we can if we can get a hold of Buddy, I think that would be that That'd would be, be pretty cool. Yeah. If yeah, we could sure. get him on. Yeah. But. I don't know. I I don't. I mean, I don't know. Unfortunately, I would love to hear. 
I mean, I, I when, when we, so we were playing in two thousands, and I would say he was in his fifties, maybe. Would that be close? Yeah. I think so. We would have been playing in the late seventies. You said it was an eighty, an eighty article. He, he that the article was in the eighties, so I would imagine he was fairly young. He went in ninety seven. I went in the in the hall. Hear, before college became the only way, you know, really there was almost a minor league at, at one point, you know, um, right. Johnny Unitas was playing for a semi-pro team in Pittsburgh. I right. Mean, that's, that's a true story. So I would love to hear those guys, uh, you know, um, their experiences, you know, yeah. that, that no, I, I think, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to do some, we'll have to do some digging. I'll, I'll, I'll call my father here shortly. He'll, yeah. he'll, he'll know. Um, <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious that we're looking at three people. The NFL was not, our phones were not going to ring. You no, know? <laughs> no. But, but for some of those guys, it was a real opportunity. And that's all they could do. Yeah. Know? No, no doubt. No doubt. All right, boys. Uh, great to see you guys again, as always. Um, yeah, we'll see you all next week. All right. Great to see you guys. Take see care. See you, boys. Take right. care, guys.